Sri Lanka very good side, there's no doubt about that. They've played some really good cricket of late. Um, the record between South Africa and Sri Lanka, very evenly matched side over the years. I think we've won just about the same amount of games against each other. So we see a very tight contest. They obviously got some form batters at the moment. They've leaked a few runs, so they might probably have a few concerns with their bowling. Um, but we know that they've, they've been in these situations before and have won these games, so we're expecting a very tight contest. There's always room for improvement. I think South Africa find themselves in a tough situation that um, if they win all their games in knockouts, people question, before the knockouts, people question them. If they don't win all their games before knockouts, people question them, and it's just uh, something we've got to bear with. But we know we come here with a clean slate. Um, we've played some good cricket. We've played some patchy cricket. Um, but we come here knowing that if we play to our best ability on the day, we've got a good chance of winning on, on Wednesday. I don't know. He's, uh, he's in the form of his life. He's got four hundreds, and you've got to think that he's, it's, there's, a, there's a low score just around the corner, I suppose. Um, but we've, we'd have worked on some plans and some things that we feel we need to execute well against him, uh, particularly when he gets uh, to the wickets. So we'd have discussed that quite a bit over the last couple of days. 1992, I was in matric. I think I was in the standards. <laughs> I was 16 years old. Um, I know Al, Al, Alan Donald played in that game. So, look at what's happened in the past in 1992. Is, is, <laughs> there's nothing we can do about it. All our energy is really focused on what we need to do leading into this game. Um, when we get there on Wednesday, we need to make sure we've prepared really well, which we're in the process of doing. And um, the, the legacy of 1992 is very little bearing on how we want to play our game on Wednesday. We've spoken long and hard when we get here about playing the, the big games and the big moments really well. Um, I'm expecting a big performance from us on Wednesday. The guys are, are really up for peaking at the latter stages of the competition. We've sort of not eased our way at it, but probably haven't played the consistent brand of cricket that we would have wanted to, and I'm expecting that to happen on Wednesday. Look, it's been, it's been part of South African cricket for a period of time. Now, every time we get to these events, it's going to be questioned. Um, we've spoken about it, there's no doubt about it. We've, we've, we've faced up front that in the past we have let opportunities slip by us um, and hopefully we'd have learned from the lessons that previous sides have made at events like this. Um, and by all means, we want to try and make sure that doesn't happen to us. Um, but look, end of the day, we just want to play good cricket. Um, if the opportunity arises and somebody's in that stage of the game under pressure, We've, we, we're trying to really focus on things that we've done really well and not get too caught up in what's happened in the past. If you've um, talked about it, then what is the plan? How are you going to deal with Jogi? We're not telling you because you'll tell the rest of the world. So that's, that's for us to, to keep to ourselves. That's great. Well, you're going to tell Sri Lanka, that's why. I, I'm not a sports psychologist, but I don't know. How, I, I, I'm not sure how a player can be perceived to be mentally shot, so I, I, it's a little bit, um, bit nasty. Um, Look, I need to sit with, with, with the selectors today, and we started the discussions yesterday about our starting 11 going forward, and it is a tricky selection, um, because on, on, on one hand, you know Quinton's got the ability to win games, he's had an outstanding year and a half, and it's often difficult to have all six or all seven batters firing and in form at the same time, and you just sort of have this gut feel that Quinton's got a big score around the corner, I remember, and I know it's a totally different area, but Adam Gilchrist got 100 in the final, with a squash ball in his glove, having not scored a run all campaign. So I sort of, I sort of have that feeling about Quinton that he's, he's just around the corner from playing a match in Indies. Because if Quinton a cock gets a sniff, he can hurt the opposition. And he's done well against Sri Lanka the last time he played against him in Tote, he got 100. So he'll have some good feelings about Sri Lanka. In a warm-up game against Sri Lanka five games ago, he got a good 60 that won us the game. So I'm sure he'll have a good feeling playing against Sri Lanka. And that's the... The thing with coaching and selection, there is no exact science. You don't exactly know what's going to happen. Um, Avery Villas could get a first baller. Quinn Cock could get 150. That's just the nature of the game, unfortunately. You've just got to go with your gut feeling a lot of the times. Look, I think um, a lot's been written and said about that. Mike Heston's probably in a similar position. I know Graham Ford, he coached the African Sri Lanka with great success, similar position. Um, and it's, it's whether you've played 100 tests or whether you've played... Ten tests, whether you've played no first class cricket, whether you've played 100 first class cricket, coaching's not easy. Um, it's, it's a lot about how you're going to manage your players, the selections you make, the strategies you employ. And I can tell you now, whether you've played 100 tests or not, not going to make a massive difference to my coaching when we play a quarter final against Sri Lanka on Wednesday. No player's going to be batting there thinking, oh, my coach has played 100 tests, geez, I'm going to smoke this out the ground now. It doesn't, it does, it doesn't work like that. So. It's all about preparing well and getting your players in the right frame of mind and 
making sure you do your homework properly. He's bowled, I, I thought he's bowled progressively better as the competition's gone. His space has been up. I think of the Spally bowl against Ireland, the Spally bowl against the UAE. There's, there's, I've got a feeling there's a big performance from Dell just around the corner. He's a, he's a champion bowler. He's led our attack for the last seven or eight years all over the world. And it's a, a matter of time before he puts in a bench in performance for us. Very helpful. Um, number one, he's brought great energy. He's brought a, a, a sincerity and an honesty to, to our environment that, that um, fits in very well with the way we want to go about our business. He seems a really good bloke, a really nice guy, even if he's Australian. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was, it was <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's good to hear from other sides um, how they feel about playing South Africa, what their thoughts are, um, the, the mental issues that he might have had as a as we perceive it, a top performing international player and the insecurities he might have had. And he's, he's played open cards with us and it's been really refreshing to, to hear that, that type of outlook from an, an Australian cricketer. I think importantly they're both really good guys. I mean, we actually had a cup of coffee with Kumar in Christchurch before, uh, before the series business started and just chatted about cricket. And he's just such a, such a lovely, unassuming guy. Avery de Ville is very similar. They're just really good blokes. They're both at the top of the game at the moment and playing really well. Um, so look, it's, uh, they, <laughs> if all our folks on Kumar Sangakara, we're going to be under pressure because Sri Lanka have got some really good players. And if Sri Lanka are just focusing on Avery Villas, that'll suit us nice as well because we've also got some seriously good players in our ranks. So it's not just about those two players going forward.